Welcome to the Neuropathy Support Group and Podcast. I'm Chris, and I'm so glad you tuned in. It's my hope with this podcast to help all of us gather information that might help those that need support dealing with this debilitating issue. Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Before we get started, let's get the formalities out of the way with the medical and privacy disclaimer. I am not a doctor or medical professional. The information on this podcast is from personal experiences and is meant for group support. Additionally, the information discussed is not meant to diagnose, treat, or cure any underlying conditions associated with neuropathy. All names here within are private and will not be shared with any outside sources. Please consult your health care provider before making any health decisions. If you have medical concerns or an immediate emergency, Please contact your doctor or dial 911. Well, how's everyone doing? I hope you had a great weekend. I hope you had a really safe and wonderful 4th of July, too. Spend your time outside with some family. It's always the best time. Especially when you can sit down and have a barbecue and enjoy each other's company. Man, this room that I'm in right now is just burning up hot today. I have all this equipment in here and it just makes it heat up. So what I've decided, which I've done this before about three years ago, I talked about the different kinds of nerve pain and how to treat them. So what I was uh, wanting to do is set up like a five-week, I guess, introduction to all these different types of um, nerve pain. And last year when I did, there was, or I'm sorry, three years ago when I did, there was only four. And now, you know, miraculously... They got have they have five listed now, and I was not aware of this one being listed until I looked it up. And so it must be something new. And when I come up to that one, which is in four weeks, I'll be talking about cranial neuropathy. Cranial neuropathy. But first, we're going to talk about the most common neuropathy there is, which is the one I have is peripheral neuropathy. I think there's a lot of us out there that this is our main issue that we have. Um, All of you know my situation in regards to my doctor visits and um, in fact tomorrow I see the vascular surgeon for the consultation first and we'll see where we're going to go from there. And I have another appointment with the getting my ultrasounds and MRI done. I really wish those would have been done already so I would be able to talk to the doctor about it more fluently, but, um, you know, times got mixed up and the dates got mixed up and that's where I'm at now. So I'll be seeing him before I get any tests done in regards to MRI. But let's move on from there. I don't like talking about that. It gets me too depressed when I start thinking about my leg. So for the next five weeks, we're going to be talking about nerve pain. Now, most of you may already know I'm going to start reading this journal, know what I'm talking about. Nerve pain or neuropathy is a debilitating condition that wreaks havoc on your daily life. Whether caused by an underlying disease or previous injury, pain without reason can wear down someone's physical and mental well-being. After a few months of chronic nerve pain, even the most resilient patients can become depressed and anxious. Treating nerve pain should be the first priority of these patients so they can go back to enjoying life free of constant pain. And I think that's one of the big issues I'm going through right now is a lot of depression. A very, very lot of depression, unfortunately. So here's some symptoms and causes of neuropathy. Nerve pain is often caused by an underlying medical condition. But diabetes is the most common, but it can also be caused by HIV, cancer, shingles, or degenerative bone diseases. Nerve pain is also a common symptom of spinal and skeletal injuries that put pressure on their nerves. Symptoms can range from mild pain and tingling at the damaged site to debilitating daily pain. Some of the common sensations include burning or tingling sensations, pinpricks at the tips of your fingers and toes, 
sudden shocks throughout the body. Oh, I get those all the time. And aching pain. Patients with nerve pain also suffer from varying side effects, including high, higher rates of sleep problems, anxiety, and depression. The constant pain can limit mobility and daily activity, leaving sufferers in their lives until the pain is treated. So that gives you a general uh, synopsis of what we're going to be discussing today and for the next four weeks. Now, peripheral neuropathy is the most common type of nerve pain and includes damage to any nerves in the extremities. Pain and tingling are felt in the fingers, toes, hands, feet, arms, and legs, which can lead to the mobility and dexterity issues. So how do you treat neuropathy? And now this is a general synopsis again. No matter what type of neuropathy you experience, seeking treatment is the first step toward a better quality of life. No one should have to live in constant pain, and with the help of a pain specialist, you can regain your life, mobility, and happiness through a variety of pain management options. For medical conditions such as diabetes and cancer, treating the underlying condition can help eliminate or reduce the pain. People experiencing nerve pain due to alcohol addiction may also find relief through rehabilitation programs and detox. However, sometimes treating the disease condition is not enough. Treatments include medications, physical therapy, and surgical intervention in the case of orthopedic injury may help alleviate neuropathy symptoms and help you get back on, the tr on, back on your track. And, you know, how can you get back on your track when you may have to have an um, amputation? Uh, come on, people. Make it sound so nice and, and beautiful like, you know, it's going to get healed, but in all reality... You know, I'm depressed now. I'm probably going to be more depressed then. Not having a leg, if that's the case that happens here. Just those kind of reports like that just get me upset sometimes. It's like these people that write these um, journals don't know. And they don't go and talk to somebody that actually has this problem and get it from the mouth of the person that's having the issues. I just don't understand it. There's so much work that needs to be done. And it's just like, I feel like they're dragging their feet. I mean, look, at, look, I didn't even know there was five different neuropathies now. And the last time I did a report on this was four. So, you know, and I was trying to figure out the year was, the difference between the one I did in three years ago and the one now. I couldn't figure out the date on this new one. But, you know, that tells you right there, there's such a big gap of them working on trying to fix these issues. But the only Final outcome is going to be amputation. This is going to be the only way this is going to work. So, all right, let me uh, go to my other journals that I have here and we'll talk about those. Now, some of the information I may repeat, but it's always good to get as much information anyways. So, peripheral neuropathy, this type of neuropathy affects the nerves that control movement and sensation of your limbs. Peripheral neuropathy is often described as having a shocking, a stocking glove pattern between it usually affects the hands and feet more severely than any other parts of your areas of your body. Peripheral neuropathy stems from problems that affect the entire body. It can also affect nerves on both sides of the body symmetry. Common causes include diabetes, especially if blood sugar levels are not well controlled, high amounts of alcohol use, medications such as chemotherapy, and immune disorders. So here's some symptoms of neuropathy. The symptoms of peripheral neuropathy, proximal, focal, and can include parathesis, diminished sensation, and weakness. Often, paranesis are the first noticeable symptoms. Symptoms can come and go but without treatment, the system, symptoms will continue to progress over time. Autonomic neuropathy causes different symptoms that may include diarrhea, constipation, urinary incontinence, lightheadedness, flushing, and more. The prognosis is some neuropathies are not expected to improve. Diabetic neuropathy and alcohol 
Neuropathy, for example, can stabilize with treatment, but the damage is not likely to heal. Focal neuropathy can improve with treatment, often with complete res resolution of symptoms. So let's go ahead and break this down. Neuropathy treatment. Neuropathy can occur through, due to the damage of myelin, myelin, which is a fatty layer of protection surrounding the nerves, or in severe cases, nerve damage may occur. The body naturally can renew myelin, so sometimes the loss of myelin can heal if the damage stops occurring. Usually, treatment of neuropathy is focused on preventing nerve and myelin damage by controlling the underlying cause. Symptomatic treatment is usually necessary to relieve discomfort or pain. Treatments for neuropathy may include optimal blood sugar control to prevent progression diabetic neuropathy, discontinuing alcohol to prevent progression of alcohol-associated neuropathy, using anti-inflammatory medications to reduce nerve and myelin damage, when neuropathy is caused by a systematic inflammatory condition. Resting, wearing splints, and going to physical therapy for neuropathy is caused by pressure, such as carpal tunnel syndrome, and having surgery to treat compression, such as with carpal tunnel syndrome or ulnar neuropathy. There are no treatments that can specifically heal a nerve but sometimes you can use physical therapy to improve your motor function and avoid injuries by learning to adapt and maximize your disabilities or, bis or abilities. All right, so let's go on here to systematic and supportive treatment. The pain of neuropathy can be distressing and it can interfere with your quality of life and with your ability to be active. Symptomatic treatment is important but it does not heal the myelin or the nerve as it does not prevent neuropathy from worsening. Medications that are often used to control neuropathic pain include antidepressants, antielliptic drugs, and AEDs, which typically are used to treat nerve cell activity causing seizures. The medications affect nerve activity in a way that can subdue the pain. Generally, the medications must be taken several times per day for pain relief. Changing your plan. Over time, neuropathic pain can, can change. You might need to use higher medication doses, or you might not need to continue medication for pain control. Standard pain medications are not typically effective for controlling neuropathic pain. Goli and bar supported treatment, particularly respiratory support with mechanical ventilation, is needed while anti-inflammatory treatment is used and resolve the condition. So in summary, neuropathy is, dam is damage or dysfunction of a nerve. This condition can affect any nerve in the body, and the type of nerves and pattern of involvement depend on the cause. Peripheral neuropathy, a common type, is usually caused by diabetes, alcohol abuse, or chemotherapy, and there are many other potential causes. And finally, it can take weeks or longer before you notice the effects of treatment. But do not be discouraged. Some neuropathies can completely resolve, and those that cannot be reversed can often be managed to prevent progression. And that's my problem is that you wasn't caught early enough and I didn't know I had it. And some of the other doctors never tested me for it. So the progression got so worse that I'm at the place that I'm at right now. So before we close here, um, I got about seven minutes. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the uh, diabetic neuropathy medications that can be used. Diabetic nerve pain impacts about 25% of all diabetics who are treated in hospitals and an estimate 30 to 40 of all people with diabetes. Unfortunately, many people with this condition do not report symptoms or do not seek care 
in the hospital setting. Therefore, these figures are likely huge. Diabetic neuropathy poses a great threat to the quality of life experienced by those with diabetes. Several drugs within various drug classes have been shown to reduce diabetic nerve pain and increase one's quality of life. Currently, the anticonvulsant uh, Lyrica, the antidepressant Cymbalta, the opiate Cinta, and the topical Capsaicin are the only drugs approved by Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA, for the treatment of diabetic neuropathy. Other drugs may help to manage symptoms of diabetic neuropathy, although they are not specifically approved to treat the condition. So first we're going to talk about the anti-seizure drugs. Lyrica is a first-line treatment of diabetic neuropathy. Lyrica inhibits the neurotransmitters which is involved in nerve pain, but its exact mechanism of action is not yet completely clear. While Tripitol has been used in the treatment of diabetic neuropathy, there is little evidence of its effectiveness. Next is Topamax. Topamax works by blocking sodium channels that open and close in response to specific levels of charged chemicals and promotes nerve pain. It is a good alternative to nerve pain medications if you are experiencing side effects or cannot tolerate them. Next is antidepressants. Cymbalta is a first-line treatment for diabetic neuropathy that re-establishes the chemical balance Effexar is a reasonably well-tolerated antidepressant that has been found to reduce the symptoms of neuropic pain. Other treatment options is Botox. Currently, there is only weak evidence for its effectiveness. Also, you have Paramptin, diabetic neuropathy in your nerves that control blood pressure can cause dizziness when you stand up. Paraptitine may be used to increase blood pressure in those with diabetes who have orthostatic hypotension. Another one is Reglin. Currently, Reglin is the only U.S. FDA-approved medication for the treatment of gastroparesis, which is delayed stomach emptying. However, the FDA has placed a black box warning alerting users to a serious safety risks. Another issue will be erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction is a, is a drug that works by widening blood vessels and improving blood flow to the penis during sexual arousal. It has been shown to promote recovery of peripheral nerve damage in mice, but human trials are needed to show its effectiveness in people. And finally, here we've got alpha lipoic acid, which I've talked about several times in different episodes and is a product that I use. This antioxidant has been shown to reduce inflammation and improve blood flow. In one study, more than 50% of the patients with diabetic neuropathy who were treated with 600 milligrams of alpha lipoic acid over 40 days report a significant improvement in their symptoms and quality of life. ALA is available as an over-the-counter supplement and can be used to complement medical treatments, but consult your healthcare provider before trying. Then you have your topical. Cutenza is a prescription patch approved by the FDA for treating diabetic neuropathy pain Study results suggest that a high concentration of a topical capsation like Coenza is safe and effective in treating painful diabetic neuropathy. I'm going to say personally with my, um, with using this topical cap capsation product, it really burns my skin. So I suggest just testing a small part on your body before you play it in big, big areas because like myself, I'm, I probably have an allergic reaction to it, but it burns, it burns your skin and 
at least that was the issue I had, so I had to, I stopped taking it, but watch out for those little things like that, because capsaicin, you know, is, is pepper, and it can get very, very hot, and burn your skin, and then we have lidoderm, which is lidocaine skin patch. The reports on the effectiveness of 5% lidocaine skin patches vary. Some reports the use of these patches in mild to moderate diabetic neuropathy, while other products claim that there is no credible evidence to support the use of a 5% lidocaine, lidocaine patch for relief of diabetic neuropathy. So real quick, let me uh, let you know the drugs to be avoided. So here's some medication to avoid. Opiates generally have not been found to help with uh, neuropathic pain. Even more, some medications have shown that they can worsen peripheral neuropathy. And these products are C-Pro, Factiv, Leviquin, Avalox, uh, Norazine, and Floxine. So when you look at it, it's a pretty much um, it's something that you need to think about and, and take care of yourself, which is like lifestyle changes. You know, how to manage your diabetes is one good area to work on. Uh, maintaining a healthy blood sugar level and practicing proper foot care can reduce neuropathic pain and symptoms and even encourage nerve regeneration, which in my fault, of course, is is. You know, isn't going to work anymore because they're so far damaged. But, um, yeah, so manage your diabetes, eat a healthy diet, avoid uh, excess alcohol, and get some uh, regular exercise will help there. And prevention is to keep your blood close levels uh, at a healthy range and check your blood sugar levels. Use a blood coast meter. And schedule a hemoglobin, which is an A1C test, which is something my doctor does every time that I go in and see her. So, my friends, it pretty much comes down to trial and error. What works best for you and what doesn't work. Those are, you know, part of the health issues that we have with neuropathy. Next week, we'll be talking about another type of neuropathy. And that neuropathy is going to be autonomic. So that should be a good talk right there for those that have this type of neuropathy. But take care of yourselves. And oh, one last thing. I went to go see my um, vascular surgeon. And it's so crazy, you know. He's trying to blame it on other things. And right off the bat, it seemed like he didn't think that he needed to do any type of test or anything. He kept saying, no, your main problem is neuropathy. And that's what you're going to get. And that's where you need to come up and just stand up for yourself and say, no, I need to have this ultrasound done so I can see what is actually happening. So, you know, I, to me, you look like a young doctor. I probably had neuropathy longer than he's even been a doctor. So just, you know, if you got to look, look the information up for yourself. And with the information I'm giving you here, you should be able to back up whatever your thoughts are on the issues that you're having. He's not having them, you are. So please do your due, due diligence and make sure you have something in hand for when you see him, you can show him the studies that have been going on. Again, thank you for listening and being part of this podcast. Don't forget to look at my other uh, sites that I have, especially my affiliates and the Neuropic uh, Support Group store, where you can buy merchandise related to this show. But again, picture, and I will talk to you next Monday. Bye. As we come to a close, it's my hope this podcast and other sources, such as product reviews that I have discussed today, can better our lives and give us some relief dealing with neuropathy. This episode plus others are posted every Monday on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. And finally, whatever life throws at you, even if it hurts you, just be strong and fight through it. Remember, strong walls shake, but never collapse. Talk to you next Monday.